Welcome to LUTV News In Focus, where we feature interesting topics on campus, in the community, and in the world of culture. I'm Dominique Lay. Associated Press Entertainment video producer and journalist Gary Hamilton has built an impressive resume. Having the opportunity to cover the music, film, and television industry has allowed Hamilton to interview celebrities such as Rihanna, Jason Momoa, Tom Hanks, and many more. I had the chance to talk with Gary about his career and about how students interested in entertainment journalism can get their start in the industry. Hi Gary, how are you today? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing well. I just have a couple questions about your whole journey of where you started and where you got. Uh, so I know that you were you went to ACU uh -huh. um, and then you are now at the Associated Press Entertainment. So how did that happen? How did you go from ACU to the Associated Press? <laughs> so it's kind of a long story. I'll try to make it uh, as quick as I can. So when I was in college, I did an internship much like you all have to do. And so I did an internship at the local NBC affiliate, which was Channel 2. So I did that internship there. And BET at the time had a show called 106 in Park, which was like a big show at the time. It was a music show where they played music videos. And I, I don't even know how to describe what the show was like, because it's really not any music shows like that anymore. But anyway, so while I was interning, I was able to get a pass, like a backstage pass or a press pass um, to the 106 in Park tour that they were doing. And so I went there, met somebody, and then said I wanted to do an internship. And so I got the internship and the following year, I interned at BET here in New York. So while at BET, I met a lady named Sine who told me about the NBC Page program. And so it was like this prestigious page program where lots of people in entertainment kind of got their start. It's not a full-time job, but it's not an internship either. It's kind of like in the middle. And so I went into the page program and from there, I just landed a series of jobs because one of the best things about the page program are the connections. And that's one of the things that I tell people all the time is really when you get a job, it's not always about what you know, it's about who you know first and then what you know will carry you through. And so from the PAGE program, I got a, a job at NBC, the actual network. From there, I went to MTV, then to CBS, and then to the New York Yankees, and then finally the Associated Press. And so I know you asked me about the journey to entertainment. Um, networking was one of my key skills. And so one day I went to a National Association of Black Journalists meeting for the New York chapter. And there was a lady named Nikessa Moody who was actually just volunteering. And so I had heard about her and someone also pointed her out, hey, that's Nikessa. She's the global entertainment editor for the Associated Press. Now we had never met before, but I just walked up to her and I said, hey, I'm Gary. I'm a member of NABJ as well. Um, would you mind if we exchange contact information? And so she said, sure. And I always kind of kept that in my back pocket. Now, this was a few years before I actually got this job. And so once I was at the Yankees and I was looking for different opportunities, I saw Nikessa posted on a listserv that they were looking for somebody to join entertainment. And I was like, hey, I, I remember meeting her. And so I reached out to her, said, I met you years ago. You probably don't remember, but I'm interested in this job. And so I applied and here we are. So you said like it's all about networking and who you know, and you said that you just went up to her. So how, what types of like personality qualities do you think an aspiring journalist who wants to work their way up, like what type of qualities do you think they need to have to be able to go and get what they want? Well, I think persistence, um, you need persistence. And then also, you know, I don't know if it's really about courage. I hesitate to use that word, but I just say networking is important. And I know some people are kind of um, shy or timid and they don't necessarily feel comfortable just walking up to people. Truthfully, um, I don't either. That's not my personality. I don't really have like a loud life of the party personality, but I knew how important that networking is. And so again, I mentioned that, you know, just from my first internship, networking pretty much got me every single job up until the New York Yankees. 
So the New York Yankees was the only job where I had no connection to anybody, but every single job and internship before them, you can kind of trace the path through the people that I met and that I knew. And so I would just say, you know, you have to network and you know, I just don't want to say get over it if you don't like to, but I just want to stress the importance that, you know, it really is an important skill and it will carry you through, carry you through the rest of your career. It's really about who you know. Now, once you get there, you have to demonstrate what you know, or else you know you won't be there anymore. But to make that first step, it really is about who you know. Like, who, how do you know who to like who to talk to? How do you know which people are the people that you need to get in contact with to be able to move further? For me, it was about anybody and everybody. Literally, um, if you worked at a place. If I found out you were somewhere where I wanted to be, I would talk to you and ask for your contact information. And you know, once you're in a professional setting and you're working, most people get it, right? Because you were a student at one time, you worked at one time, so you know what it is to have contacts. So for people that are actually working, it's not weird to have somebody come up and say, hey, you know, I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Can we exchange contact information? So it's not a, a weird thing at all. It's just you know, everybody that's in the business knows that this is kind of how the game goes, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, so I know that you have interviewed um, a few celebrities. Um, I was looking at your page and I saw a lot of um, people on there. So how do you prepare for each of those interviews? Like, what do you do to make sure that you're prepared and how you feel is the correct way to interview them? I think that it's just research, right? Um, I think that you just do your homework you do your research. And a lot of times if you're working in entertainment, you have a curiosity, right? If you're working in news, you have a curiosity about the world, whether it's national news or you know your local community. If you're working in sports, you have a love of sports. Or if it's not a love, it's at least an interest. And so I think when you're in entertainment, you have an interest in entertainment, but you still do your homework because entertainment is such a vast vacuum, right? So it's not just music it's music, it's movies, it's theater, it's about the production that goes into all of those things. It's about the companies. Now you have like Netflix. And so it's such a vast vacuum that you can't possibly know everything. And so like anything else, you just have to do your research and learn as much as you can about it when you're preparing to talk to one of these people. Do you think you could give me a, um, a, a work day? Like, you, could you describe a work day in your life for me? Um, so I'm an entertainment journalist with the Associated Press Entertainment team, but on the video side. Now, although my primary duties are video, I also write a lot of text. And so a typical day could be, you know, I wake up, um, I, and of course, everything is virtual now, right? So it, it's much different than when we were in person and I'd go into an office or have to go out on a shoot. Um, but right now I'll check the wire, see what the latest news is, um, not just with entertainment, but also just the news of the world. And then if I have any interviews scheduled, I'll just start my interviews. So much like you and I are talking now, um, depending on what celebrity or person in entertainment um, is doing that day or whatever interview that I have scheduled, then I'll just start it. And then once I finish that interview, I may start editing that interview or I may edit something that I did, you know, a couple of weeks ago or days ago. So it really just depends. And then we also have what we call our news shift. And that's kind of what I was doing today. Um, it's all of the news that comes in that we're monitoring. One person per day is kind of manning all of that. It's kind of similar to an assignment desk. And so basically you're just making sure that all the stories that other journalists and reporters on the entertainment team are doing are fact checked properly. You know, you're just proofreading, making sure there are no mistakes and then you're sending that out. And so really the, the day just kind of varies. I mean, you know, I'm not going out on shoots right now because it's COVID. So everything's done virtually, like I mentioned, but um, there's always something different. There's always a different interview. There's always somebody to talk to and always news that's popping up. So um, it's an interesting job. Do you have any specific advice that you would give aspiring journalists who are looking to move up in their entertainment career or even news? You know, I think that first off, entertainment is such a, a big, vast genre, like I mentioned. 
And so there are lots of different forms of entertainment, right? So I'm an entertainment journalist. So the news part is first, right? So you may have entertainment journalists that work on the radio, which is totally different. And I don't really know if I would categorize that as true journalism, but it, you know they're doing reports, they're interviewing people. Um, same thing even with some of the uh, reporters that you see on entertainment shows. Um, a lot of that isn't necessarily journalism, but is it is a form of like entertainment broadcast production. And so you kind of, for students, they have to figure out which route they want to go, right? Do they want to go and be on the radio where they're not really talking about news, but they're talking to celebrities? Um, do they want to go the broadcast route or the print route? Now, um, from the, and magazines are also very different than newspapers, um, and it depends on the outlet. But what I would say is, if you want to be an entertainment journalist, like you have to be able to write, um, you have to be able to um, tell good stories. And really, most of the entertainment journalists that are on the Associated Press started in news. Um, I would say, all of them, really. Um, and it's because they were able to write well, they were able to, you know, report really, really, really good stories is how they ended up in entertainment. And so the story that I tell about Rihanna or Drake or whichever celebrity we talk about, it's no different than if I'm writing a story about, you know, the mayor of Houston or what's going on in Beaumont. It's the same principles. You're trying to tell a story, you're trying to tell facts, and you're trying to do it fairly and accurately. It's just the people are switched out, right? Instead of the mayor, you're talking to a celebrity. And so I would just say, make sure you learn how to write well and report well. And then once you are able to cross over entertainment, those skills will still carry you through just a different medium. I would like to sincerely thank Gary for granting us this interview. Thank you for watching LUTV News In Focus. To see more content from LUTV News, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.